will China actually succeed in moving from being the most effective follower in history to the next leader of the innovation economy? The really biggest strategic question, U.S. has now had to run about 100 years as the undoubted acknowledged leader of the innovation economy, not just the military leader, but the leader of developing, deploying, and showing what to do with this new stuff. Well, the question that I have, the biggest strategic question is, will China actually succeed in moving from being the most effective follower in history to the next leader of the innovation economy. I don't know, they don't know. This three-player game with Chinese characteristics between their state, their financial markets, their evolving market economy, it's an indeterminate game. But we do know that for the last 10 years they've been spending more money on R&D in green and clean tech technologies. They have the authority of the state, if deployed, and they certainly have signs of it, to mobilize the resources to shift radically the carbon content of their economy. And as I say, we've abdicated. I don't know what the answer to that question is. Our children will, our children will learn what it is. And it's an enormous strategic question that, that goes beyond the immediate political arguments in the U.S., of which I think the single most important is whether we can, maybe not until beyond 2020, try to play catch up. If World War II hadn't happened, if Korea hadn't happened, if the Defense Department in 1950 had been the size of the Defense Department in 1938, the digital revolution would still have happened. It wouldn't have been a revolution, it would have been an evolution. It would have taken two generations or three, not one generation. There would have been less disruption. That wouldn't have made that much difference. The problem this time around is that climate change isn't gonna wait. When was the last time you were this worried? Or is this the most worried you've ever well, been? Well, I was really worried in 2007. You know, in my, in my so those, those two points in time, 2007 and where we're at right now, yeah. are comparable. Well, they're different. They're different. But they're comparable. Comparable, certainly, in concern. There, the concern was immediate. Now, during my, what I call my 35-year sabbatical from Cambridge University, as a, when I was working as a venture capitalist, I got to know one maverick, renegade, brilliant economist really well. His name was Hyman Minsky, Hyman Minsky, the Minsky moment. The student of how financial systems evolve from stable, conservative, to increasingly speculative, to ultimately crazy looking for a crisis as we were in 2007. And because of Minsky, as well as my experience as a graduate student writing on 1931. I was really tuned in to the threat of a financial crisis at the time when only a few people like Nouriel Roubini were talking about it. This is different because this is, this is long term. This is going to unfold over time. I think we know that, first of all, we're not going to go back to the way the world was before Trump was elected or before the Brexit referendum took place, there are consequences. And we're going to be living with these consequences for a long time. And I expect that they will hobble us in responding to this threat and challenge, which should be an opportunity of climate change. But it's going to slow us down. The amount of emotional investment on the part of those who are denying it or that attempting to deal with it would destroy jobs, well look, you know, the coal industry is gone and the jobs left to be destroyed in the coal industry, you know, we probably could fit into the garment district of New York and, and still not have, you know, still have plenty of room for, for more employment. But the opportunity that's being foregone is tragic and the costs that are going to be borne always, always inevitably by those least capable of bearing them are tragic. You know, I, I sometimes, in a somewhat cynical mode, say, you know, there's bad news, 
that becomes good news, but then it becomes bad news. Just so, like failure can lead to tremendous success. Well, the lessons. bad news is we're going to lose the Greenland ice sheet. That's almost inevitable. Its movement is accelerating. It's years ahead of what was feared would be happening. It's still probably a generation away. That's the bad news. We're going to lose the Greenland ice sheet. The good news is that when we do, Palm Beach is going to be under a, you know, five yards of water. But the bad news is, by the time that those who have finally seen the consequences of climate change are motivated to want to do something about it, it's too late.